I want everyone to kind of open their mind for a second and consider Einstein's uh, theory E equals mc squared, uh, energy and mass. So Eastern medicine actually focuses on the energetic perspective of that same formula, whereas Western medicine focuses on the mass, the physical. So if you think about it, energy, now everyone's starting to say how everything is quantum physics or string theory, which everything's a vibration. This table here is particles moving at a very uh, slow rate, whereas other kinds of energy are moving at a very fast rate, so it's not solid. So that's kind of like the science. And uh, ideally, we would probably see the best type of medicine combining both the Eastern and the Western approaches to uh, medicine. But that Acupuncture is an alternative medicine methodology originating in ancient China that treats patients by manipulating thin solid needles that have been inserted into acupuncture points in the skin. According to traditional Chinese medicine, stimulating these points can correct imbalances in the flow of qi through channels known as meridians. Now, acupuncture is just one type of modality under the umbrella of Eastern medicine that, uh, that goes with this idea of manipulating qi. Here are some of the others. Now, a lot of these you probably haven't seen and some of them you are recognized right away. For example, uh, cupping. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen cupping, the idea of suction cups. Um, these glass cups, this is called fire cupping. I'm not going to actually do it, but I will do a quick demonstration on the table. Now, there's different types of cups. Most practitioners today use cups that are uh, with a pump, a manual pump. Whereas the old traditional way is using a flame to create the vacuum for burning up the air. Now, the, there's so many types of cupping, but what would happen is the practitioner would do this, light up the flame, put it under the cuff, and then put it under the body. Immediately, you see a suction of vacuum pulling up the skin and the flesh. Now, why, why do we do that? Usually, a lot of times, people have pain. People have pain along, let's say, the low back, classic area, but there's no bruising, right? But the blood and the chi, we'll get into chi later, but the blood, there's a bruise. It stopped moving. It became stagnant. But you don't see it on the skin level. So what the vacuum is doing is actually pulling up that stagnant blood up to the surface, and then you see a bruise mark form because it's pulling it up, and then it allows the new blood and new chi of your body to flow through where the injury was originally. So that is a concept. Something you see similar today is a lot of the baseball players, basketball players are going to Germany or other countries in Europe to get the injections of the, plat the blood platelets that have been manipulated. Same concept in terms of theory, except this is a natural version of it. Now there are many styles of cupping where it would be sliding cupping, where I might get an oil, rub it on the back and then slide it back and forth to really pull it up. Now if I put a cup on any part of the body that didn't have an injury, you will not see a bruise form. The bruise wasn't there to begin with, so there's nothing to pull up. So it will be red and it'll be like a hickey, but it won't be, it won't be blue. And after a few minutes, it will go back down. But when you do a cup over an area that's pain, most of the time you'll see that, that stagnant blood that was deeper into the tissue pull up to the surface, and then that allows the healing process to begin. The patient will feel more tenderness on the surface of the skin, but that deep achiness, the muscle sinews have released, the blood starts flowing through, and a cool burning herb. It's applying heat to points. I'm going to give an example of that with a breached baby later on today. But sometimes your body needs more energy, right? We see that all the time. For example, let's say you have uh, your digestion system. You're having diarrhea, prolapse, right? Applying heat to a point, or even in acupuncture, putting the needle and applying the herbs on top of the needle and burning it, that sends heat into that specific point which strengthens the organ, which allows your body to heal, and you get rid of the diarrhea, which is usually in one treatment right away. Um, some other uh, modalities, gua sha, tui na. Gua sha and tui na is the same concept as a cupping, except it's not as deep and powerful, because you're actually getting a smooth surface, like a Snapple bottle cap, per, per se, or a spoon, you're getting oil, and you're rubbing on the surface of the body. And that immediately, if you have an injury pain, it brings up the stagnant blood underneath and you see the bruising form literally within seconds. If there is no pain, you do not see the bruising come to the surface. It just doesn't reach as deep as a cup. Thousands of years ago, 
we realize that the reason why his arm cannot go up is because he's subconsciously muscle guarding. Right? What happens when someone's about to hit you? You immediately reflex and you can't go up. Right now, his body is trying to protect himself, his shoulder, so when he tries to raise his arm, it can't go any higher than this. Right? So in the past, when he was a child or when he was younger or healthy, his arm was able to go all the way up to the top. But as this gets worse and it's not addressed, his range of motion will gradually get worse, usually, in most patients. So I'm going to give an example of what we can do. Now, what I have him do is, uh, is this, which way is the harder? This way? Front or that side? Side right? Okay, so we're going to go sideways lateral, right? So I want you to match the pressure, uh, match the pressure, let's start from the very bottom. So match the pressure that I am, but don't overpower me. At the same time, I want you to move up. So it's kind of, you're playing a, we're playing a mind trick on himself right now. We're telling him to push against my hand, which is all the way down, right? That's where he doesn't want to go. That's the future. This is where his hand, his range of motion will get worse and worse. So we're pushing against that future of worse range of motion. And we're telling him to, at the same time, push against, uh, I'm sorry, push against the future, but move towards the past. So now I want you to keep on moving. Let's start from the bottom, all right? So push against me, match my pressure. Now, at the same time, I want you to move five inches up this way, but keep on, there's always constant push on you. Always constant push. Don't let me push you up. Take a deep breath. Breathe out, push me down. Now, force me down, inches. Force me down, force me down. Good. Now, five inches, go up, take a deep breath. It's very hard on the brain, right? What we're doing right now is we're, we, we're formatting his brain like a computer. He's his brain saying, what are you doing? Why are you trying to go this way and that way, the opposite directions at the same time? You see his arm shaking, right? That's uh, what we call wind is coming out, but I'll explain that later. So you see these tremors, right? And it's uncontrollable. It's not you doing it, right? Keep on pushing. Push me down. Force me down a few more inches. Force me down. Now match that pressure. Keep Match the pressure and keep on coming up. Move towards the past. You want to get to where you used to be, where it's four inch, right? Okay, now relax. Just let it go. Now, I just did a very quick, usually I do like, you know, much longer, but let's see if his range of motion is improved. Everyone see that, right? It's about, what, 25 degree improvement, would you say? 20 degree? And how do you feel? Right, so what did we do? We, we manipulated his mind to release the natural muscle guard. You can do this simple technique on anything. So sometimes when I have patients who are also going to physical therapy saying, oh, they're forcing my leg or arm to uh, go higher and it's straining the muscles, you can, all you have to do is manipulate the mind. But it's very difficult and I'm sure he's going to tell you all, it, it, it's very, it takes a lot of concentration because you're like, what am I doing? It's confusing it, but it reset his muscles. And if you did this at home, I guarantee you will get 100% range of motion pretty quickly. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, essential oils. Now that falls under biochemistry. Uh, it's not a hokey thing. I know aromatherapy is very popular in France, but uh, it, applying certain essential oils on certain points, the cisketerpenes, the ethanols, going back to all our science days, it actually affects and has manipulations over the chi flow and organs. And even uh, essential oils are being used today in major corporations in the US and Japan. They secretly, or not so secretly, diffuse certain essential oils in the morning noon and afternoons to increase the, uh, the worker's productivity in terms of concentration and their alertness. And that, that's done regularly. Casinos, you know, we already know they pump oxygen in. Now they're pumping in oxygen plus essential oils to keep you at the tables longer. Uh, Reiki, Qigong therapy, uh, that's becoming more popular. Um, meditation falls under Qigong. It's like Tai Chi. Uh, you hear uh, Deepak Chopra always talking about meditation. Uh, just a quick uh, entertaining story about uh, meditation. UPenn Medical School study professor was doing uh, MRIs on Buddhist monks, uh, Franciscan monks, and uh, Christians who were speaking in another foreign language unknown. Buddhist monks, when they did the meditation and on the MRI scan, the frontal lobes were so on like fire, so much activity that's inhuman, inhuman in terms of the amount of activity. <laughs> That's why when you see those Discovery Channel documentaries, the monks are able to just wear one clothing, one, one sheet of clothing and stay in that freezing cold weather because they have 
cultivated the ability to control their body temperatures by focusing on the frontal lobes. Uh, Franciscan monks, totally different uh, belief system, able to do the same thing. When they did the scans on them, frontal lobes were firing off like crazy. They were able to control their body temperatures, do things that are not possible for normal people. And the last group, which was, I found very interesting, and this was all in 2020, several years ago, um, when he scanned their brains, there was no activity. So their claims of speaking in tongues or whatever it was, was actually consistent that it's an outside entity in terms of the UPenn professor of study uh, when, he, when he gave his report. Uh, he wasn't agreeing with them completely, but he said that there was no brain activity or whatever was coming out of their mouths. Uh, bone setting is similar to uh, chiropractic work, but back in the day, there was no cast. So back then, they, special, they designed a special system and technique where they would actually fix your bones by setting them in properly, and then they would heal. And uh, Tom Vizio, he's in New York City, he's one of the four, four more most experts in that field. Now all these modalities have one thing in common, and that is uh, cheap. 